And here we are on a historical week in Washington with the release of the highly touted and highly anticipated GOP memo. The memo joins us live, <laughs> as does Congressman Mark DeCigne from Congress. Look, unclassified. Course, unclassified, finally declassified, free for the American public to read. You read it before it was declassified, your take. I didn't understand what the big deal was. There was a lot of drama. Um, I think the process is more concerning that they, Republicans wrote the memo, submitted it to the committee or in the committee, and then demanded it be released. There's all this drama, and then it comes out, and of course the president says it vindicates him when it really does nothing of the sort. But what it does set up is raise questions, or it's aimed at raising questions yeah. about what triggered the investigation into the Russian collusion, and whether it was based on actually research done by Democrats to dig up dirt on Trump and then hand it off. Was, the question becomes, was the FBI played? That, that's a good question, but that's not the only thing in the application for the FISA, for the warrant. And then they had to renew that three times. So they cherry-picked that part of it, and that's true. That was part of the presentation to the court. But there were other things in the, in the application for the warrant. And what are those other things? Those other things were things that they knew beforehand. The Papadopoulos conversation with the Australian. So all of these things had triggered them to look for these things. And really what it's all about is undermining the Mueller investigation in the FBI, which, if you're Innocent, if the president's innocent, wouldn't he want to be investigated and cleared? And we don't, he, that the investigation may come back and say that, but they certainly are behaving like they're guilty. Well, it's, it's in a long tradition we've seen this on, in, in past special investigations. I mean, when Bill Clinton was being investigated for Whitewater, I seem to recall Democrats saying it was a vast right-wing conspiracy and raising questions about the validity of that investigation. He was investigated for a land deal and wound up being uh, uh, charged uh, or in, in hot water for Monica Lewinsky, something that was completely unrelated. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, isn't that what the Republicans are afraid of here? I, I, don't, I don't. My history is not that there's an equivalent see here there is the problem and and people should hold us both accountable to how we go about this but w we should be at this point looking at the Howard Bakers for instance mm -hmm. or the Howard Bay of the Watergate era where Republicans and Democrats in that case Sam Irvin were working just to get the truth and we should be at that point right now so that if he is innocent then that comes out and we move on Speaking of that, the Republicans made a big deal about this, and it was uh, from the sidelines. It almost looked like the Democrats were rising to the bait, rather, rather than say, "You got this cherry picked memo. It's a press release. You do these all the time. Release it. We'll put our side of the story out." Instead, they rose it to the level, "How dare you? How can you?" And brought much more attention to this than than it would have previously gotten. Well, I think there's two parts to the equation here. The one part is the ham-fisted of this. Aspect of this that they made the Three Stooges look like SEAL Team Six and how they went about it, the Republicans. But the other side is the process and the undermining of these institutions. So that's a serious part. The other part is I don't think the Republicans succeeded in doing anything except making them look foolish. Where do we go from here? Oh, well, we've got to go back next week and fund the government before the end of the week. So there's there's the functioning of paying our bills. It's, it's and there's the DACA. What do you think happens with DACA? Uh, I, there's got to be some compromise there, and I think there's the element of it with Susan Collins and the effort in, in the Senate, where I think there's a legitimate bipartisan effort to give them a path to citizenship and move on with this. Pardon my cynicism, but when I see like all the time devoted <laughs> to something like this, I wonder: is this a way to just play? to avoid the, the issues like immigration, yeah, like I, the, mm -hmm. the, the war in Afghanistan. Yeah, Nobody's talking about that. No, it, I agree. I agree. It's a, I'm a member of a very dysfunctional institution right now, the U.S. Congress. We don't do our job. We don't have open hearings and talk about the real issues, like funding government, like our involvement overseas. Instead, we're running around doing this stuff, and we should just let this investigation run its course. All right. I want to thank you for joining us this morning and bringing along the now declassified memo that will be maybe a Jeopardy question someday or a footnote in the end of some high school history book. Congressman Mark DeSonnier, thank you for joining us.